Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. One, two, one, two. Yeah, I'm rocking with the No Vultures podcast. You got me, myself, Lord Rap. You got OG Clee going on a vacation. Free OG Clee. Get back home, Clee. You got Corner Barber in here. What it do? And today we got a very, 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 very special guest. Now, this guy is responsible for a lot of, lot of history, man. And 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 to me, when I first heard this dude's production was with the amazing Four One Five group that included D Lo, Richie Rich. Himself. Who else was in four and five? That was it. That really? was it. Yeah. yeah. And 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 um and he later on mm. went into you know uh, working with No Limit, mm. um, getting major deals, working with uh uh um uh, uh all kind of motherfuckers, man. And they and they actually used his style. We are gonna get into that later. If you ask me, they used his style on a lot of music, man. We got the legendary DJ Durrell in this motherfucker, DJ man. DJ Durrell up in this man. thing, man. Man, I've been wanting to get up here, man. But, I, I, you know, like I said, I wanted to come up here and talk about something. Yeah, you know? yeah, I yeah. I got something ready for you now. You know? Is that right? Well, well, you've been had it to talk about, but <laughs> yeah, we you, feel you, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to have <laughs> yeah. some music, you know. We, we, we'll let you get away with that one, man. But, you you know, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? You a legend, man, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I got to give you the No Vultures disclaimer, right? Okay. So we started a podcast um, because, first of all, there was a void with this type of media where we from, right? right. Um, nobody right. was getting down to the nitty gritty. It almost seems as if the Bay Area music, as of recent, uh, started with the hyphy movement. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what it seemed like. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know no different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it, it, it's like we had to come in and we, we, we not an old show. Right. We're not we're not for youngsters. We just a cultural show. And mm -hmm. if you impact the culture, we would love to talk to you and get down to it. And also we're not a West Coast show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we also not a show that is clout chasing and we wanna bring you up here because some of you and your ex group mate uh got a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. So now no. niggas wanna talk to DJ Durrell. No, we no. we start from the beginning <laughs> to present day. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. That's so, right. So that's how we like to do it. So Okay, it's so all good. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm pretty how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Um, my business is good. My health is good. I'm, I'm for sure. I'm good. Man. You've been yeah. getting through this old pandemic. What y'all been well, doing through this? Man, we caught it at the beginning of the year. It slowed us down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. My birthday was on the third of January, and right after my birthday, I think my wife caught it first, and we quarantined. And then I, hanging out with her, I caught it. So we stayed at the hotel room for about mm -hmm. fifteen. 16 days, something like that. Okay. Sheltered in place, so huh? So we wasn't able to really put no work in like we wanted to. Yeah, you know, so yeah. We'll be catching up now. Catching so up, God man. bless yeah, everybody man. get through that. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. For sure, man. Um, So, straight to it, man. Born and raised in Oakland? West Oakland. West, West Oakland. Oakland. Highland by, Hospital. Highland Hospital. Uh, <laughs> but so about, about what neighborhood? So, my father, my father was a Vietnam vet. So, when he got out the... Uh, out the army, he moved into Ghost Town neighborhood. Okay. So when I left the hospital, we lived in uh, Ghost Town. Mm -hmm. But then my mom left my father. My father was real abusive, so she left. And we went to go stay with my grandmother, my grandfather, who was, lived in Lower Bottoms. Okay. So I stayed out, stayed in Lower Bottoms. I went to school, Prescott, kindergarten, all the way up to the sixth grade. And, and uh, then my mom moved us to Cypress Village. Okay. Then I, from Cypress Village, went to Lowell Middle School, then mm -hmm. to Mac and so on. Okay. So it's not really one hood in West Oakland that I can claim. I mean, sure. we, we okay. live in Cypress Village, but my whole everything about me being a DJ and mm -hmm. the name DJ Duro came out of the Acorns. Mm. I was, there was some guys there. Uh, shout out to Keith Massey and Franchise Yancey. They taught me how to DJ. Mm. And that's why I learned how to DJ. And I was like, that DJ. was like what high school? Um, junior high. Junior high. Junior high. You know, I mean, I had to press them like, man, come on, man, teach me how to do the mixes and all yeah. that. You know, they wasn't messing with me because 
I used to run with a little clique. We was kind of rowdy. Okay. You know, we was breaking, uh, okay. in, breaking in the car, stealing oh, decks. Okay. I mean, y'all finding y'all way. <laughs> yeah, you know, what, what we used to do, we wanted to be some DJs because we seen what they were doing. So we used to break in cars, steal car decks, and then right. on the weekend, go sell them up at the swap meet or something okay. like that and try to get some DJ. Berkeley, Berkeley swap meet? <laughs> no, Alameda. Alameda, Alameda had okay. one right with, with a... Uh, uh, Drive in used to be okay. The Coliseum, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Coliseum. I'm sorry. Um, so growing up in West Oakland, like and starting to DJ, you DJ in these uh, house parties. Well, first of all, growing up, we before we even get to music, like growing up in your household, was it was you was y'all middle class? No, nah, my, my my mother, um, she's a single mother, and my mom, she used to she was died she's diagnosed with uh schizophrenia okay so uh a lot a lot of a lot of my independence come from me having to take care of her oh, okay. Age, okay. okay like a okay. lot of lot, a lot of cats didn't know you know i it wasn't that i couldn't go outside it was that i wasn't going outside because i had to make sure my mom was taking her medicine and things of that nature so right 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 she was always on a fixed income okay you know what I mean? so so you matured early. I had to. Yeah, to mature I had early. to. I had to pay bills at a young age. I had to get money at a young age. Yeah, you know, all yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. that's that's cool. And you had grandma around, and my grandmother used to help me a little bit, you know. Okay. But you know, she got she she had all this responsibility. You know, whenever my mom would have one of her spells, I would have to call and try to get some help. You know, from my uncles right. or, or my somebody. aunties to come okay. through and help her. You know, and then she might go stay in the hospital for like two or three weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. I would have to stay at the house by yeah. myself. You know. Uh -huh. And uh, that just that that raised me to be more independent. Yeah, I was about to say that created yeah. that independence, that, yeah. that that yeah. that that drive too. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. It's that. crazy because I, when I got into high school, I, I kind of I dropped out. Okay, in high school, you know, a lot of it had to do with me having to stay home and deal with my mom. Okay, but so in the process of me being home a lot like that, watching with my mom, it had me practicing. So my little DJing skills became superb because you, you know? were, cause you I was always in the house, yeah. you know. So I yeah. learned how to be like I was doing things that only the East Coast DJs was doing. I was okay. doing out here. Okay. What was you working with at that young age, messing around at the house? I had uh, little, I had two turntables. Little, so I was a teenage father. Okay, I, I became a father at seventeen, but my son's mother, her uncle, had a DJ set, and he gave me these two turntables. Mm. His name was Damon Damon Island. Gave me these two turntables. You remember the brand? Was it, was JVCs. JVCs. Yeah. Okay. Because Technique Twelve Hundred was the one. Yeah. That yeah. was the that, key, was, that was the thing to have. That was okay. The yeah. So that was under that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I had the I had the JVCs first. Okay. Right. And then um, I was DJing parties. You know, every mm -hmm. weekend somebody mm -hmm. had me DJing their parties. I was DJing all through the Acorns. Okay. Uh, lower bottoms. You know, anybody that was giving a party. If it, if I wasn't DJing, they wasn't showing up at it. What's the what's the what's the uh, scene like at the time? What is it like? Um, is it is it like? Paint the picture for us. Is this D boy times? I mean, I mean, or yeah, is this, it, or this, is this, it? this this the mob? Okay, <laughs> mob I was there, DJ. Right? I was a mob DJ. Okay, you know, okay. so uh, the acorns. You know, it was it was the mob was running around in that through that they was running acorns around that time. Uh, okay, and so all the parties that were going on, they they saw the. You know how people was always going to the party and the parties was like successful uh -huh. yeah. and then they start hiring me to do like private parties okay and that kind of got around and it's like uh they came to me one time was like uh we about to start this music thing you mm. know we know you the one to come to about the music okay you know because i you know when you dj you you dj for so you know so long before you start messing with drum machines and right, things of that right nature. it's just right. a natural progression yeah, yeah so i started messing with drum machines i got my uh first 808 around that time so i started tampering with making beats and things mm -hmm. of okay. that nature okay and uh when they came by and this is uh uh darren banks mm -hmm. he was he was running acorns at the time and uh tone stringfield was a rapper okay and uh, they came to me, made me an offer, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll DJ and be, I'll be your DJ, whatever, you know." And um, they bought me um, all this equipment, mm. so I ended up getting them twelve hundreds. Yeah, yeah. Right. it came, it came. And it's crazy because right around the time that I got those turntables is when I met EA Ski. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, okay. Yeah, he he was already here. doing this thing, huh? No, 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 no we all started the same time. time. We, nah, it was me, EA Ski, and CMT. We had became CMT, real, CMT. real tight, good friends, you know. But uh, uh, when back then, though, what, like when you said, referencing back to what you just said about East Coast DJs. So are you talking about in particular like the cuts and scratches or like yeah so you know back then transforming was a new thing okay and only a few djs knew how to do that like Ooh. jazzy jeff jazzy jeff yeah uh, okay. dj cash money they don't talk jazzy jeff was dope as fuck oh yeah, yeah. he was dope back then all the philly, philly djs were dope dope yeah. uh dj red alert red alert and on the west coast you had uh uh radio dj joe cooley. joe cooley yeah so i used to be in dj battles with him yeah joe cooley so wasn't nobody doing none of the transforming and I, okay. I had learned how to do that okay so it was like wow you know yeah. i was shocking people. how did yeah. you learn that it wasn't no instagram or nothing back then so like well, I was well you know i, I, I was um, moving around outside i was of the listening West, to a lot of records <laughs> so you was giving yourself tutorials you listening practicing like that i'm practicing it? like crazy you yeah. know I, I had whole routines down i was dope with it okay real. okay uh, even jam master j wasn't even transforming he was okay. good with the turntables yeah you know the scratching and stuff but right. he wasn't even transforming in okay so i had a little bit of him in me mm -hmm. a little bit of grandmaster flash in me mm -hmm. and a little bit of dj riddle i had all this stuff down packed right down, packed. and i was able to put all that in my own package okay you know? so okay i was you know and i had a uh uh he was my my best friend at the time he wasn't a rapper but he was like an mc so when i would dj parties he'd be on the mic getting the crowd kind of turned up and i had little routines i could do the whole jam master j routine well, well since you right there i just want to say that because we we learning this a lot now i mean well the younger generation not even me because i was just outside but <laughs> the the mc was the DJ's hype man right that's what it was that's, that's so what it was. everybody came to see the DJ like you know mm -hmm. uh, every yeah, rapper had a song about their DJ, DJ. yeah that was the thing that yeah. was the thing and yeah. I, I my, my best friend at the time that's what he was for me okay you know we used to make I used to go go to school at, uh, at McClyman's and sell these mixtapes okay. it's called them stupid fresh mixtapes okay know? it's like um it's not the kind of mixtape that they make today it's just a mixture of all kind of music so mm -hmm. I had like you know all the latest music around at that time all mixed up on one tape and okay, okay, the okay. ballers used to come to me like man let me get one of them tapes dj you know they were giving me up to 50 dollars for a tape <laughs> <laughs> so i was selling tapes i would go home because i really wouldn't you know if my mom was going through one of her spells i really was at home locked in right. so i would be making these tapes and then uh -huh. when she come out of her spell i'll go to school and I'd sell a few to some of the hustlers mm -hmm. and that, that kind of got that kind of helped me too okay you know, you know as far as be djing parties and stuff you know so every weekend I was DJing a party. Every weekend. So as your as your uh, boys, you uh, end up messing with and DJing for how how serious was they about rap and and how far did they go? Okay, so the guys that taught me how to DJ, they wasn't you know they was OGs. They wasn't really into the whole rap thing. The rap because okay. rap music hadn't really hit yet. Yeah, and people right. wasn't you know really respecting it. It was either. really Run DMC was like the biggest thing, you know, and everything. And they that implemented a lot of rock. Yes, into yes. the yes. right. mainstream. Yeah, so yeah. We, you know we was playing a lot of the um, the pop music from the eighties. This is like early eighties, eighty six, okay. eighty five. You know, around that time. You know, so people weren't even tripping off rapping themselves. They mm -hmm. were just tripping off DJing the music or they just wanted to however listen you can mix the yeah. music. Yeah. And yes. They so they their special request was just a whole man, bunch man, of man, whatever the hottest I had songs famous was at mixes. the time. I used to have mixes that people used to like. I had a mix with uh, what's that song? Saturday, Sunday, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday yeah. Love. Yeah. Saturday uh -huh. Love and okay. uh, Houdini. Friends, mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. some dope little mixes mm -hmm. with that, and I had mixes to where you might hear like three records playing, you know, at once. Okay. At once you know, but the mix was so dope, it so might be smooth, two yeah. records mixing, and then it'd be some scratching on top of it, transforming. You know, people was like, they was it was exclusive, right? right. The boys right. had them old school Sir and Vegas back then, so <laughs> yeah. that shit was coming about that trunk. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and thinking about we we when we had Chris Hicks here, I like to paint the picture of Oakland because mm -hmm. we've never been really uh, properly depicted on film or none of that. You know, what I'm right? Saying? They we don't never get proper representation. No, we don't. And mm -hmm. that's why I say people think it started at the hyphy movement or something. Like it's a lot more to this shit. Like so. When you're making these mixes, you know, I, I know what you're saying because I'm a little boy mm -hmm. looking at these cougars 
looking at these stains, looking mm -hmm. at these step sides, looking at yeah. all these cars, <laughs> these blazes, and those are because you know it's not a CD player. Right. These so you want tapes. a mix. You want a, a ride out. Right. And I used to make these little 90-minute tapes. Yeah. Mixing from front to back. Mm. All the way through. Different music. And Dope. the more exclusive the music was, the more I could sell for the tape. You know, I, I might say something like, I got a, I got a new song on here by uh, Just Ice. Or, yeah. you know, some, some hip-hop artists that just came out, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, Skylar Rock, uh, Skylar Rock. Uh, KRS One, yeah. or something. You know, people used to yeah. love that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, they right. do. And you know what's crazy about that, and how I know, because as a young boy, I, and right now, I remember when niggas used to listen to BDP or listen to KRS One, World Peace. Yeah, like if you know, like it was different songs, or like when mm -hmm. when when Soul to Soul hit, or when shit, it was certain shit that had impact on the city, and I could hear it in y'all music later on when y'all was making mm -hmm. music. So when the, the the guys you was DJing for, uh, and and it sounded like it sounds like the average dope boy story, right? Mm -hmm. Where I mean, or where a hood thing where you got the dope boy with the money, mm -hmm. and you got the artist. Got the artist, and see for me, the I had the homie that had the money, and his his homie was the rapper. Okay, mm. but he knew that his homie wasn't the rapper that was going. Taking, taking him nowhere, thing. you right, know what I'm saying? Because right, he was, right. the, he was trying to keep up with MC Hammer, believe it or not. Okay, and he was like, "You ain't gonna be able to do it." You know, ain't gonna do it. Ain't it? So, and I'm coming from a world of reality rap, was started fall in place. Okay, you know, it's in my music because mm -hmm. the rapper that I was dealing with, he never really wanted to rap to my music because it was too. It had that reality feel that, to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like, this is too street. I need something more I can dance to and yeah. get my groove on. And right. I'm like, I'm coming out of that. I'm coming with heavy bass lines and, you know, 808s and pianos and things of that nature that's giving you the, a certain feel when right. you hear it. What, 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 what years would you say we in right here? This is 80, 87, 88. So, so NWA has dropped. But the Arabian Prince version, right? That they was out around the time with yeah, that. Yeah. They hadn't did the NWA, the thing. other right. shit. Yeah, right. They right. hadn't done it yet. Right. And so, and so, when is in this time is like how far is this between when you meet Jed? So I met Jed through my boys that that was putting money behind me with okay. the music, you know. Um, okay. And I met Jed. that wasn't even on no music stuff. Okay. It was just on, um, you know, he he gonna be hanging out here at the studio with you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So just be just chill out with him. Mm -hmm. And he hearing me make beats while he ain't he in the studio hanging out with me. He hear me making these beats, and he like you know every day he come out of the studio and the cold part is he might he may he maybe said like maybe seven words to me the whole week we been hanging out, you know. Yeah. I was introduced to him like this Jed man he got yeah. buddy he gonna be hanging out with us, you know just you know chill with him. I'm like, okay, it's cool. <laughs> so I'm making beats and I put a beat together and, and uh, he heard it. He was like, you just made that beat? I'm like, yeah. He said, man, I got somebody that might be able to rap to that. Mm -hmm. Bring them through, you know? And I'm like, okay. And sure enough, he brought him through and it was Rich. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and Rich freestyled to the beat. He was just rapping to it. And we, everybody was all there and he was like, it's, it's dope right here. He got it, right? You know? Right. You know, he had he hadn't figured out how to structure a song yet. You know, mm -hmm. he just was rapping, just right. freestyling right. through the mm -hmm. whole beat. So this a teenage rich, yeah, a young teen, was yeah. sixteen. He uh, hadn't made hadn't made a record yet. He hadn't done nothing yet. I don't, but see, like, no, he's he's older than the just like a year older than me. So I was like mm -hmm. around nineteen, eighteen, something like that. Okay. So he might have been he was a year older than me. So, and um, the song turned out to be "Don't Do It." Don't do it. That was the first. Song I I produced okay. and made, you know. Mm. Okay. And um, Rich got on it, and what what history.